Farming Simulator 23 is just around the corner. You need to know if you're gonna pick it up or not? Well, we've had our mitts on it for the last few weeks. I got all the information for you. So today we're gonna to be talking about the five biggest things you need to know about Farming Simulator 23. Now, like I said, we've put in about 40 hours so far in game, guys, and we're on the Nintendo Switch version. There are two other versions coming, one for Android and the other for iOS. I guess they're technically the same. They're the mobile version. There is the Nintendo Switch version, which is the one we've been playing. Now, the difference between the Nintendo Switch version and the iOS and Android version is just the number of equipment. So the Nintendo Switch version, guys, it comes with 130 pieces of equipment, 130 plus to be honest. The iOS and Android version, they only come with 100. However, those 30 plus pieces of equipment, they can be bought in game with coins. So you can just buy them kind of like a mini DLC or a microtransaction just to stock the rest of the game up if you want to buy them. There actually is one other change between the two versions, at least that we've seen so far. The Nintendo version does not have a display quality setting in game. However, the iOS and Android version, the version we've seen in the past, does have that quality setting so you can pump it right up if your device can handle it. Moving on to the things you need to know about Farming Sim 23, as far as the game goes itself, guys, there is now seasonal cycles, kind of. It is in, well, visuals only. You can still plant, you can harvest, and you can do your weeding and fertilizing whenever you want, but there is a crop calendar, which um, kind of changes the way the game looks. So you're gonna go through your, your fall, spring, summer, and winter, but it doesn't really make a difference to when you work your fields. However, what the crop calendar will do, guys, the prices will change on your goods. So you harvest wheat in the summer, well, your products may not be the best value to sell until later on that winter. So that will be the biggest thing you'll be kind of watching your crop calendars for. Also, I should mention that the difference between Farming Simulator 20 and 23, as far as time frames go, you can now sleep through the night. You just go back to your house, click on the button, and guess what? You can sleep. You no longer have to wait at, you know, 90 times speed for the night to pass. Number two, and well, you've got two maps. It goes with two and two, you guys get it? Anyways, you've got two maps for Farming Simulator 23. You've got New Brun, which is the European map, and then you also have Amberstone, which is more the North American map. Uh, take note that the tutorial for in-game is only on Amberstone. New Brun, you don't get any tutorial. So just kind of make a note of that. These maps are very reminiscent of the Farming Simulator 22 version of, what do you got, Elm Creek and Oak Belleron? I believe I said that right this time. You've got those maps, they kind of feel somewhat similar, but they're a little bit different as well. So don't expect direct correlations there. Number three, it's all about difficulty. And this is more for those of you who come directly from Farming Simulator 22, maybe have not played the mobile version of the game, but there's an interesting change in difficulty in this mobile version if you're comparing it directly to its, well, its bigger cousin. Guys, there's a lot more grinding that happens in this particular game than in the, the full version, I should say, or in the, the PC console version. Just know that you're going to be doing a lot more cycling of your crops and it's going to be a lot more work. You're okay with that? If that's what you enjoy, then, I mean, it's a great gameplay loop of harvesting, replanting, harvesting, replanting. But just be aware that, you know what? There is a definite difficulty spike if you're comparing it to Farming Simulator 22. Those who have played Farm Sim 20, well, you'll be right up on this gameplay loop and you'll understand what I'm talking about here. There is just a lot more of that grindingness that has to happen since you are dealing with somewhat smaller fields than maybe the bigger the Farm Sim 22 has. And uh, that causes, the, you, need to, you need to make more products essentially. Fortunately, since there is not an extra actual seasonal cycle, you can replant right after you harvest and just get that, that cycle going over and over again. Now, since we're talking about difficulty specifically, one of the reasons why it is a little bit more difficult than, for instance, Farming Simulator 22, is there are some features that are missing that we've come kind of accustomed to if you played that full version. Uh, specifically, you can't take bank, bank loans out, uh, you can't sell fields, and you can't really build or build any, sell anything on your farm. So that's something that definitely has led to an increase in spike because whenever you run into problems, there's not like a backup plan where you could just go and take money out from the bank.
Now that's going to lead me into number four, which guys is the new feature in Farming Sim 23, Production Chains. This was brought into Farming Simulator 22, as you may be aware. What this is, is essentially factories that you can take your products into to make them more valuable later on. So you could take, for instance, your wheat, your, far your barley, your oats to the flour mill and turn it into flour. And then that flour will sell for a higher price than what, what the bare product would have sold beforehand. So these production chains, guys, are a great way to make the game not necessarily easier, but maybe more in depth and allow you to progress a little bit more. So it's not just the same game pay loop over and over and over again. You're actually building up your production empire, essentially. Now, because of production chains, you also have pallets in Farming Simulator 23 which also means you're going to get auto load for pallets in Farming Sim 23. Now the pallets and the bales, they behave almost the same in a lot of ways. They each have their designated pieces of equipment, guys, which will have auto load functionality assigned to them. Now, for the most part, those pieces of equipment don't kind of cross. So for instance, a trailer that's designed for auto loading pallets will not auto load the bales and vice versa. So you end up buying specific pieces of equipment for that specific reason. Does that make sense? Now, since everything is auto load, there's no wonky physics you need to deal with, which is kind of good in a way. You simply pull up with whatever you're going to connect it to. It will auto load onto that piece of equipment. And the only way to remove it from that piece of equipment is either to sell it, drop it off in, for instance, your barn, which will take both bales and ballots. And uh, yeah, that's how you do it. There's no kind of wonky physics anywhere. There's no weird spots where you can kind of store things. Everything has a place. You can't just move things around willy nilly. Maybe that makes the most sense. And finally, number five for things you need to know, guys, workers and traffic have been reworked. Now, traffic is interesting. Traffic is a little bit smarter. We'll actually pull out and pass you now. That's even better than what we have in Farming Simulator 22. So yeah, if you're driving down the road with a truck and traffic is sick of you, it will just float and pass you. Also, your workers, they are a lot more functional now. You can actually assign your workers and tell them to drive to certain parts of the map to pick up products from your silo, go and sell them off at a sell point and maybe do a loop. They're much more functional, very similar to what you have in Farming Simulator 22. If you've messed with that in Farm Sim 22, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're coming from Farm Sim 20, this is a whole new piece of the equation. And it does make life a lot more, I don't know, it's a creature crumb comfort. Let's go with that. It, it does make the game uh, a little bit easier in some ways because you can just assign a worker to go do everything. If you don't want to do a bunch of runs to the sell station, you can just tell him to go take care of it and take all the wheat and go sell it off for you so you can go and work on other projects. So there you have it, guys. I think that is the big things you need to know about Farming Simulator 23. Like I said, this comes out on May 23rd for iOS, for Android, and of course for Nintendo Switch. Of course, if you want to see more videos from that, you can go check that out. We have a bunch of videos on the channel here. Go well, click on the subscribe button, slap the like on your way out, of course, as well. But check those out if you want to know more about the game itself, as we got a little series running. So anyways, thanks for watching today, guys. If you've got any questions, drop it in the comments. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day, folks.